Hey guys, with the recent 2.9 update released in October, the Razvan team added IFF codes to the Mirage 2000. As of now, this is only working between other Mirage 2000s, so in order to prevent a bunch of friendly fire and team kills, let's break down how to use it. If you don't know the basics of IFF in the Mirage, I'll attach my other IFF video. Okay, so first thing we'll talk about will be the controls. So we're going to go to Options, go to Controls, make sure Mirage 2000 is selected. Go to Search and look up the word Hide. The one that we want will be hide slash show control stick. By default, there is no keybind for it, so I set mine to J. What this will do, this will be toggling the view of your joystick. That way you have a full view of your IFF transponder panel. Next one, search the word nose for nose with steering slash IFF interrogate. By default, it should be N on your keyboard. If you don't have this binded to your HOTAS, do it now. What this will do, it will let you IFF radar contacts to identify who's friendly or foe. Okay, so now we're in the Mirage 2000. There's nothing special set up. I just open up the mission editor and place the Mirage down at Batumi. This portion, we're gonna go over the transponder, which is located behind the control stick and underneath the radar display. Whatever you have set up to hide the control stick, push it now. For me, it's J. We're gonna zoom in on the transponder. As always, I'm gonna break this down using the KISS method. After I go over what everything is and how it works, I'll give a couple examples of how to use it in the game. So to start off, the transponder is what answers the IFF calls. Actually, I'm going to move the camera real quick to try to get a better angle. There we go. Starting with the top row, this is how you're going to set the codes for the transponder. Mode 1 sets the codes from 0 to 7.3. Then mode 3A sets the codes from 0 up to 7.7.7. Okay, then we got the second row. So the first one we're gonna talk about is gonna be the identification mic switch. The ident or identification switch is spring loaded, so you have to click and hold it. When you do this, this also triggers identification function if you have law ATC. Let go of it, it goes back to the middle, which is the out position, which has no function. Then if you click down to mic, this enables an emission of the identification reply each time the microphone is keyed on UHF or VUHF. All right, then next you have the M1 and M2 switch. These are going to be used for military modes. This allows our transponder to reply back to IFF interrogations. Then you got the M3A switch, which is going to allow the transponder to reply back to an ATC that's requesting information from you. Then you got the MC switch, which is going to allow the transponder to reply back to civilian aircraft requesting altitude reports. As of now, the MC switch does nothing in DCS. All right, then moving down from that, we got the master mode knob. It's pretty self-explanatory, but just in case, off means off. Standby, normal operating mode, and then you got emergency. Emergency is gonna be transmitting in mode one, two, and three alpha. All right, then right below that, we have the test button. This is gonna be conducting a self-test for the transponder. All right, then we have default light, which indicates a fault with the test or a failure to reply to an IFF interrogation. Okay, now we're going to move left to the light gray area. It's going to be our control knob. The first thing we're going to talk about will be the whole position, which is also spring loaded. So you left click it and let go, it'll go back to the default position. So what this does, it's going to prevent the stored codes from being erased after you land. Once your main gear is depressed on the ground, you'll have less than one minute to do this. If you forget to do this, you'll lose the codes. But if you rearm or repair the aircraft, the codes will be restored. All right, next will be the A and B modes. These are day-based modes, so if you fly on day one and you fly on mode A after midnight or 0 hundred Zulu time, you'll need to switch to mode B. This is actually implemented, so if you fly a mission that goes from day one to day two, you'll need to change the mode. Then last is zero, so if you accidentally do this mid-flight, you just Z'd out all your codes, which means you just erased your code, so you better go land and rearm or repair your aircraft. Um, this is all used for emergencies, so yeah, if you do this, you just messed up. All right, then you have the on-out switch. This is going to allow the transponder to respond to code 4 interrogations. All right, then last will be the audio out light. So audio is going to be failure to reply to a mode 4 interrogation due to incorrect or missing codes or even transponder damage, which will be indicated by the IFF light on the dash and the audio tone. Do it again real quick? Yeah, okay. Then you have out, which is no audio or light. Then you have light, which is valid mode for interrogation replies are indicated by the green reply light. Failure to reply will be indicated by the IFF light on the dashboard. Okay, now we're going to move to the interrogator panel. So we're going to zoom out. Okay, so the interrogator panel allows the pilot to configure the IFF interrogations. So the transponder is what replies to IFF interrogations. 
The interrogators will ask the IFF interrogations to other aircraft. Okay, so a quick breakdown of this. So you get the mode selector, which selects different IFF modes that will be used by the radar for interrogation. Then you have the IFF code selection switch. This is going to select the left or right digits. You get the IFF code selector. This is going to select the IFF code for mode 1, 2, and 3 alpha. Then you got the IFF interrogation mode, which is going to select the IFF search pattern. Okay, so I'm going to try to get a better view of the mode selector so you can see the whole thing. It's going to be kind of weird. Perfect, I guess. <laughs> Alright, so like I said before, the mode selector selects the IFF mode that will be used for the radar interrogation. So the first one we'll go over is mode 1. Alright, so now interrogations will be on mode 1, which is going to be using two digits depending on the IFF code selection switch. So if I go left here, it's going to be these two digits here. Okay, so the next one is going to be mode 4. This is going to be the most common one that everyone's going to be on. So if you're playing single player like a campaign, or if you're on an online PvE server going against AI, use code 4 because it's going to work properly. If you're on an online server doing PvP, like Groundland Sidewinder for example, each coalition has a different code set. So coalition blue has a different code set than coalition red. So if you're going against the enemy in the IFF, it's going to work properly. All right, next will be mode 3-2. This is going to be using mode 3 alpha. It's going to be using the first two digits of the first two digits right here. The next mode will be 3-3 three, three, using the three digits. Then 3-4 using four digits. And then if you're on mode 2, this is going to be interrogations will be done in mode 2. For modes 1 through trolley, I'm not going to go in depth about it as it deals with flying in the non-combat zone, which is kind of rare in DCS unless you're flying a squadron mission with a well-defined non-combat zone. But I will show the images from the manual if you are curious and want to pause and read them. I will however set up one example which will be mode 3 alpha which is used with a ground controller such as LOT ATC. Alright so I'm going to use the example from the manual to set up mode 3A. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hide the joystick. I'm going to go to the master mode knob and flip it to the end position for normal operation. Now to enter in mode 3A, I'm going to flip the switch up. I'm going to enter the pre-given or assigned code from the ground controller. So that's going to be 5105. Just a reminder, the transponder panel is what replies to IFF. So now we're flying around in a non-combat zone whenever the ground controller slash ATC wants to interrogate us for like altitude information. With the code they gave us, they can now interrogate us whenever they want. All right, so now I'm going to go to the interrogator panel. I'm going to select between 3-2, 3-3, and 3-4 because we're not in the combat zone, so we're going to select one of those. And the code they gave us is going to be 5-1-1-5. And I have the search pattern to full, so whenever we're flying around this non-combat zone and I want to find a friendly, I'm going to hit my IFF button on my HOTAS and a friendly is going to pop up with this code. Okay, hopefully I broke that down nice and slow for you guys. Okay, so now we're going to talk about mode 4, which is IFF in the combat environment. It doesn't matter if you're going against players or AI. So the pilot doesn't have to worry about setting up the code because it's already a code set established by the ground crew. The IFF transponder could hold the two code sets for two different days, so mode A and mode B. Alright, so how to set it up? So let's remove the joystick. Make sure your master mode knob is in the N position for normal operation. A or B, doesn't matter. Then your on out switch to the on position. Go to your interrogator panel. Make sure you're on mode 4 and your uh, IFF search pattern is in section or full. And a couple reminders. After you land and your main gear is depressed, make sure you go to hold and let go of it. That way you don't lose your code set. If you land and you forget to do this, you're going to lose your code set after a minute. And you're going to not have that code until you rearm or repair to get that code back. If you're flying a mission that starts before 0 Zulu and crosses after 0 Zulu, you have to set your code or your, your mode from A to B or vice versa. Alright, hopefully this video is helpful for you guys. See you on the next one.